to Pete and Hannah's watch list. I'm your host, Pete Mitchell. I'm here with my great co-host, Hannah. Hello, people. Hannah, we're here today for movie news. And uh, before we begin, we've got a uh, good clickbait today. We're looking at uh, some Oscar movies, and we're also going to look at your movie news. But before we begin, let us tell the viewers and the listeners of what they should do. Pretty please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. And leave a comment down below your favourite, maybe, Oscar movie pick for this year. Mm. Sounds good. And any feedback. <laughs> Hit the notification and you'll get great content like this one, including we interrupt regular programming. We also, what's next? We looked at Madam Webb. Funny movie. Great movie. Uh, we also talked about Tal Swift, the Eras tour that mm. we went on. That was good. And tomorrow, we are going to review for the AFI Top 100, Bringing Up Baby. Movie Baby. number 88. Bye-bye. But before we get on to Hannah's movie news, it's clickbait. Hoo-ha. Hoo-ha. And we continue our series of movies that we are looking at I love that. for Best Picture this year, Best Picture nominees. Now... So far, we looked at Nanny of Four. We looked at Bar B. Bar B. Bar B. Bar B. And Maestro. Mm-hmm. We looked at Maestro. Those three. We're going to see Zone of Interest this week, and then American Fiction comes out on Amazon in two weeks. Yeah. So we'll do those two. I thought today, well, let's have a look firstly at Oppenheimer. Mm. Sounds yeah. good. Drop the bomb. Sounds good. Up I, love, I love the other. Up and on. Up and on. And we'll also have a look at my movie championship belt holder from last year. Oh, past lives. Past lives. So we'll do those two today. Oh. But first, Oppenheimer. Directed by Christopher Nolan. It is the story of Robert, Robert Oppenheimer. Robert Oppenheimer. Robert Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. About the Man- Manhattan Project and how they... A race against the Nazis to build a nuclear bomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, great cast. Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, just a who's who. Bongo boy, Nepo <laughs> baby. <laughs> um, it... it just, look, Nolan is one of my favourite directors. Right up there with Denny Villeneuve. Right up, right up there with Ridley. Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Just love him. And he's getting his due plaudits. It's just amazing. And I'm so happy that he is getting the plaudits. This movie is... It goes three hours, but it's still fast-paced. Yeah. You know, he got the best out of uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Um, he got the best out of Killian Murphy, who is a fantastic actor, but he got the best out of him. It's... He's written a great script. He has directed a movie that's well-paced. It looks amazing. And... Not just the bomb scene is great, but the the the, the last hour of the court case and the the hearing and then the the revelations in the congressional hearing, the JFK bit out of nowhere. <laughs> we thought it was a five star all time classic, and you know it's it's rewatching it. We've got it on four K. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Your thoughts on Open Arms? Uh... Well, you know, you don't get to commit the sins and have everyone feel sorry for you. Uh, it is Strauss. Anyway, um, the truly vindictive patient as saints. It really is just, um, it, it's incredible because biopics, there are so many of them. And a lot of them are by the numbers and the same old, same old. This one is completely um, almost like out of the box thinking with having this, the idea of the future stuff with the court hearing and then you have what's going on. And Strauss bits usually, black and white. Yeah, usually when you're going back and forth in movies, it tends to be quite um, jarring and overwhelming. Like in The Dry 2 recently, there was like a lot of back and forth with different stories, and, and but they all seem to connect in a way. This movie, it really blends really well. Every moment keeps you... It, it's enjoyable and intense. And you have this sense of like dread. You start to really understand... I wouldn't, like, it's not about sympathy with Oppenheimer, but you start to understand the man behind what is the one of the world's greatest weapons. And it's an incredible feat that 
Well, not only that, but um, the interest that sparked back into IMAX and cinema, like people taking an interest in film like never before, like wanting to see print, print going and getting physical copies of Oppenheimer to really experience that amazing quality of film. Yeah, it it's it's incredible to see because you know he, the reason we have ten movies now is because Christopher Nolan made The Dark Knight, which is one of the most impressive superhero movies of all time, right? I didn't get on my own. And um, but it got it got the push because people wanted it. People mm -hmm. wanted the extra. We wanted to see more movies and we wanted to see things like that. And then Christopher Nolan continues to make these great films. I think Interstellar should have definitely been. Um, way more nominated than it was, like movies like he's done in the past, and it's great to see finally that, yeah, he makes this amazing biopic, and he's definitely going to deserve everything he gets, hopefully. You know what's really exciting is that Tenet is going to be in the <laughs> cinemas next week, so I'm going to see that, and I cannot and, wait. And Interstellar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oppenheimer. Uh, it's going to win everything, and we're going to do our live... Reaction show on Sorry. TikTok and YouTube, and we can just sing the praise of Oppenheimer again and sing the praise of my boy Chris Rowland. And we'll ridicule anything that takes away from Oppenheimer's greatness. This is true. This is true. Let us talk about my movie championship belt holder from last year. Mm -hmm. Movie that I loved, I've re watched many times, past lives. Incredible film. The Elevator Pitch. Oh. It is about. Two childhood sweethearts that are broken apart because one of the pair's family moves over to Canada and then she moves to America. They rekindle uh, 12 years later and then get talking and then it doesn't work out. And then another 12 years later, they rekindle and then they have this meeting up in New York and uh, Celine, Celine Song directs this. She also wrote this. It's just amazing. I, I love this. Mm. I, I just love this movie. I love the ending. It is an amazing ending. Yeah. It just, it looks great. It's well paced. It's it's heartbreaking, the ending. It's so well shot with a tracking shot. It's just, <laughs> I, I just, I just love it. I just yeah. really love it. Um, half it's in Korean, half it's in English. Uh, yeah, I just can't speak highly enough for this movie. Um, I think Celine Song um, should have got she nominated did, for yeah. Best Director. But she didn't, but she's got nominated for That's Best true. Screenplay. I hope she wins. Yeah. I really do. I really hope she wins. Um, it's her first movie. I'm really looking forward to seeing her, what her next movie is going to be. I think Dakota Johnson's in it. Uh, which she's a, a favourite of ours. And, and Pedro Pascal. And Pedro Pascal. He's in everything. And Maybe he'll lose his head in that one too. Um, oh. He, it's just a really good movie. I, 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 if you haven't seen Past Lives, you should. Um, it's uh, distributed by A24. It's available on streaming. You should go see it. You should get it and see it. It's, it's one of those movies that not a lot of people seen. It only made twenty million dollars at the box office, but it's just really good. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, everyone who um, has seen this movie usually says, "Oh my god, please go see it," because it's it is one of those movies that still um, beautifully haunts you in a way. If you've watched movies kind of similar to La La Land, where it's this like beautiful love story told in in parts, like these two people coming together. Um, and also things like, it even reminds me a little bit of Harry Met Sally without the humour. It's more so just the serious nature of these two people that, um, you think are destined, like they, they really had a life together and they still try to connect and it's so, but it's so human and so mature, like, cause we don't always get what we want, I guess. And it's really beautiful and it just captures... Um, it's New York, isn't it? Like this movie? Yeah, yeah it captures yeah. New York in a really beautiful light and it's just interesting to see that there are movies like this. It's just a beautiful, almost small town story, I guess. Like Greta Lee, who you might have seen her in Newsroom, she is phenomenal in this. You got um, T.O.U. He, he plays Hong Song. He's great as well. 
the the toughest role is <laughs> uh, John um, Magaro, who plays Nora Greta Lee's uh, character's husband, and he knows that you know that they were supposed to be meant to be each other, you know, and they talk about this thing, um, past lives, is uh, how in other lives they were... What would happen in another life? Another life that compares what to happen now, and they're, they're saying that um, they weren't meant to be in this life, but maybe they'll be meant to be in another life, you know? And it was just heartbreaking, the ending. It was just, oh, I just loved it. It was heartbreaking but uplifting as well. It's just, I hope I get across that you should see this movie. And <laughs> it should it should win as many awards as it can. I know it's up in a tough year against Barbie yeah. and Oppenheimer and um, the holdovers. And, you know, we haven't seen uh, Zone of Interest in American Fiction. But they've they been loved as well. But uh, Past Lives, like, I don't give the championship a holder lightly. Like... It beat Mission Impossible. Yeah, I know. And, and I, it I beat love Mission Thomas Cruise. Yeah, it beat Thomas Cruise, and I love Thomas Cruise. Like he's my favorite actor. And <laughs> uh, just yeah, this movie's so good. I just we, we we've we've reviewed two movies today that are both all time classics in my mind. I'm um, Hannah's rated them as bangers. Um, but no, I'd probably give Oppenheimer an all time classic. Yeah, because I I really do generally love the film. Yeah. And you love past lives as well, like you get I, no, as well. I, I really do like past lives. It's just not like I don't, yeah. I, I don't hundred percent gel. I like, I don't, I don't know, just some things I just don't gel with. Which yeah, is yeah, unhappiness. The ending. <laughs> uh, but I me, like the ending. I just don't gel with it. I love it. I love it. Uh, A lot of my favorite movies are pretty interesting. <laughs> that is it for clickbait today. Uh, so next week we're gonna look at zone of interest. Uh huh. Because we're going to see it this week. And it's going to be included in my favourite segment. Hannah and Movie News. Welcome back to Movie News. This week, are you ready for a road trip? Because director Ethan Cohen is at the wheel with his new movie, Drabaway Dials. In this film, we have two young girls going on a road trip to Tallahassee. And unknowingly have a stolen briefcase of criminals... And there's something weird inside with a slew of cameos, including my man, Pedro Pascal. This movie looks to be a wild, fun, crazy movie. We also get to see Zone of Interest, a movie that I have no funny comments to because it is a gripping story that's unsettling and somber and is about a family that lives in a very nice house and garden that is situated right next to, unfortunately, a camp set in World War II. Well, that is what we're going to be seeing this week. And uh, leave a comment down below on what you'll be watching. And until next week, bye! Oh, good week. Mm -hmm. Driveway Dolls, Ethan Cohen's new movie. Yeah, looking forward to see that. Uh, also... Best Picture nominee, Zone of Interest. Wow. wow. Good week. Uh, next week is going to be great. Looking forward to seeing those movies. We'll also look at some Oscar movies in Clickbait as well. Don't forget, Hannah. Tomorrow, bring our baby. Wow. Mm. AFI 88 movie? Yeah. yeah. It's available on YouTube, so you can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, that I found, yeah, found a copy. It's very hard. This is one of the hardest movies Available to get very much here. On our trip to Melbourne, we went to the DVD store. It's called Play DVDs. I, I checked everywhere for this movie. Um, but they've got a great collection. So if you're ever in Melbourne, and if you're from Melbourne and you listen to the show, uh, hey, how are you? Uh, but also, go see some movies. We bought um, three. Uh, JFK on 4K, uh, Malcolm X on 4K, and The Conversation on Blu-ray. The conversation is just at an all time. Like he made that movie the same year as he made Godfather Part Two. Wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, that is it for today's show. For YouTube viewers, stick around. You'll get the answer for Can You Guess the Movie. Great stuff. Also, bring out baby. But don't forget, we've got Championship Belt Holder. Yes. Two thousand eight. Blockbuster Ooh, coming on the channel this week. The two thousand eight one. That's a tough one. That is. 
Ooh, ooh, I like tough. Thank you to my lovely co-host, Senna. What a week. Yeah, big week, big week. Wow. And great weeks coming up. Long live cinema. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Until we catch up for AFI Top 100 Podcast, it's bye for now. Can you guess the movie? And this week, the answer is... Wonder Woman, 1984. Hannah, that is pure. Pure. And the little Taylor Swift out there in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad blood. We use Pedro. Because Pedro is in Driveway Dolls. And he's in Driveway Dolls. Yes, that's great times. Uh, so, that is the answer. Looking forward to what we've got coming up next week. Mmm, it's a surprise. A surprise. Uh, great times. <laughs> Until later in the week. Bye. Bye.